favorite emoji is the heart emoji. Hi, my name is Molly Brown, and my favorite emoji is a cactus. My name is Lexi Honey, and my favorite athlete is Sis Bates. My name is Lily Hamill, and my favorite athlete is Jocelyn Allen. My name is Ava Van Lanshoot, and my favorite athlete is Devontae Adams. And that team from Arizona will take on this team from New York. South Orangetown and Little League winners of the East Regional ran their way through the East Regional, went 5-0, and outscored the opposition 28-1, to and the one is a big reason for that is who's in the circle here tonight. Most definitely, Haley Arvidsson is so good. And she and Alyssa Chiappa, the catcher back behind the dish, are the battery to be beat. They do so well communicating with one another and just absolutely giving the defense an opportunity to shine. She threw two perfect games at regionals, and as she fills the zone with tons of strikes with a fastball, a changeup, a curveball, and a drop ball, those 30 strikeouts, so impressive, but maybe the more impressive number is just the one walk given up. It's funny, they said, yeah, they pitched two, she's pitched two perfect games, didn't even know it until after the game had ended. Look at those numbers, 26 innings pitched, 30 strikeouts, certainly going to be a tall task for this Arizona team, but this Arizona team can hit the softball. They were able to do that uh, throughout their regional, went four and one as a runner up in the West Regional, scored 55 runs in those four games, Jim. That's an impressive number, but really it comes down to being able to get the timely hit. They hit 333 as a team in that regional with six extra base hits. Are they going to be able to string together enough against this tough New York team? Even though they lost the final game, they lost the regional championship 10-0 and still outscored the opposition by 20 combined runs. Here we are in the circle tonight. As we said, Haley Arvidsson getting the nod. And Bria Belden watches the first one cross for a ball. And I really like that first pitch down in the zone, trying to take advantage of a hitter that might be trying to get something early, but just filling out the zone early on. 2-0 here as Arvidsson gives a second look to the home plate umpire. Bria Belden, 12 years old, rising sixth grader from Scottsdale Prep Academy. Hit 333 in the regional. That one called for a strike. And what you're already seeing is this strike, this strike zone is going to be up higher in the zone. He's not calling that pitch down. So as a pitcher, you have to take that information and relay it as the rest of these batters come up. That one. Consistent strike zone there. Home plate umpire Charles Tijola. Two two is wide, and a full count now for the first batter. Yeah, you want to make sure that you keep those emotions even in the circle because this is a really big game. While it is just pool play, it determines your seating for the single elimination bracket play. That one skied to second. Adriana Diorio with it and one away. Always nice to get that first out under your belt. You can see that smile ready to go ahead and get things going as they get that first out here in the top of the first. Enjoyed our conversations with Alexis Honey, Lexi Honey, 13 years old, rising eighth grader. You can typically find her in the circle. Won't find her in the circle to start here tonight. As Lily Hamill, her teammate, will get the start. Shanoran Trails Middle School, rising eighth grader, 13 years old. Looks at that one for a strike, 0-2. And when we talked to the head coach, Brett Kundal, about this team, he said, you know, Lexi Honey is the backbone of this team. She's a great third baseman, but also really good in the circle for us as well. Swing and a miss. Three pitches, three strikes, two away. Well, it looks like Arvidsson is settling down quickly. A little bit of a fist pump high in the air. Paints the outside corner, gets the swing and the miss for her first strikeout of the game. 30 strikeouts in 26 innings in the regional. Picking up where she left off. Now Ava Van Landshut. 
Long, long last name, but some amazing results in the regional. Eight for 17, 471, five runs batted in, couple of doubles as well. And you can see why those doubles happen. Very mechanically sound in that swing. Coach said she's a tank as a hitter. When it comes to the big ball, they are definitely looking for Van Lanshoot to be able to do big things for them. That 471 average in regional is so impressive. She said she gets a hold of it. She can smack that ball, and she does, down the right field line. Over to get it is Handelman. Van Lanshoot with a two-out single. Well, and one of the things we've been seeing is that the outside pitch has been very generous for pitchers. And so as a hitter, you have to extend the zone and be ready to hit the ball off the plate on that outside corner. She does a good job of just letting this ball travel, keeps her head very still, goes the other way with it for the first hit of the game. Opportunity, the 12-year-old. Pitched nearly 17 innings in the regional, nearly a five earned run average, 15 hits, 13 earned runs, 19 walks, 26 Ks. Gonna be important for her to settle down early. Most definitely, over quarantine, she worked on velocity, and so she has hit 60 miles an hour. So I think that puts her as the fastest pitcher in this World Series. With that being her focus, she's really gotta hammer the zone. She relies on that fastball to hit spots, but comes down to not giving up those free passes. Adriana DiOrio, 12 years old, rising eighth grader. At the plate here, was unable to get a hit in that regional. Did score a couple of times, reached base a few times with a walk. The daughter of one of the assistant coaches for New York. In there for a strike. So we've seen the strike zone be very consistent. The low pitch is not going to be called in this game. He's a home plate umpire likes that pitch a little bit higher in the zone. So it look for this ball to need to be above the knee for the strike to be called today. Yeah, one in there as well for a strike. Coach. Kiapa telling us when Diorio gets on, she really makes our offense click. But now with a one-two count to Lily Hamill. Side two and two. And of Diorio, he calls her the spark plug of this team to be able to step in, start things off at the top. Says that she's clutch, and while she did not get a hit in regionals, you mentioned it earlier, she got on with the walk, so she has a really good eye as well. The 2-2. Lily Hamill in the circle, the rising seventh grader from Horseshoe Trails Elementary School. The full count. That one just a little bit high and a walk. When it comes to Diorio, Coach Chiappa says about her, when she gets on, we click. Well, that's a great start for New York to be able to get that leadoff batter on. And now it'll be pitcher versus pitcher. Haley Arvidsson up. A workmanlike first inning. Faced one over the minimum, squares to butt. And sometimes you'll see teams square to bunt without the intent of laying it down to just see how the defense is going to react. So there you saw both first and third are crashing to the plate, which would open up a little bit more defensively if she pulls back and tries to slug it through. But right now, the name of the game is scoring runs. They're going to try to put her, Diorio over there in scoring position. She scored five runs in that regional for her team, went three for 12, hit 250. Now a nice hitter's count here at 2-1-0. Oh. Squares, that's a strike. And that's a really good pitch to square around and try to bunt. 
even in a 2-0 count, you know that you're going to get a pitch that's closer to the zone. And when you get that sacrifice call, you only want to bunt strikes. That one very close to the zone. That's a good attempt. See Van Land shoot having to sneak in there with the bunt. No bunt shown there, but a strike call, 2-2. Two and two. Another full count for New York. I will say the strike zone has changed over the course of the day. This strike zone a little bit tighter than what we've seen in the three other games today. So as a hitter, you can be a lot more disciplined on pitches at the plate. Definitely not a pitcher zone in this game. Giorgio ready to run. That one is low and back to back walks to begin the first. Yeah, definitely not the beginning that Lily Hamill was anticipating. She's got a great pitching coach in Becky Lemke who played at Arizona. Um, I talked to her this week to get the inside scoop about Lily. And she said, you know, she works really hard on control and right now just needing to harness that in with those two walks and come back just fill in the zone with strikes. Two on inside and the runners will advance on that wild pitch. And this could turn into a disastrous first inning. Definitely, and it's all about emotions, being able to reel in what the co umpire's calling. And so far, this pitch that gets away is down, it's in. It ricocheted off the umpire's shin guard, which made it go a little bit further. Luckily, no runs are scoring, but now they're just 60 feet away. Melissa Chiappa, three-hole hitter. That one's way up, 2-0. Chiappa hit 6-15 in the regional. Seven singles, a double, drove in four, scored six times. A couple of stolen bases as well. She can hit that one foul away, two and one. She definitely can hit. So the key for Kiapa is to make sure that she gets that front foot down early enough to catch up to pitching that might be a little bit faster than what they've seen previously. Hamill right now throwing in those mid 50s. While she can hit 60, she did not have a good regional according to her head coach, Coach Kundal. So is it going to be a situation where she needs to just settle in and find the zone? Coach Kundal says he has all the faith in the world in her. She just needs to make sure she fills the zone and trusts her defense. Alyssa Chiappa telling us in the first inning, we want to punch him in the mouth, figuratively speaking. Get on the board quickly. Let them know we're there. But she looks at a called strike three. And that's more the strike zone that we've seen in the previous three games here today. That pitch on the outside corner, while it hadn't been called earlier in this game, looks like the zone's going to open up just a little bit. Gets her first strike out. Brings up Savannah Nordstrom, rising eighth grader, South Orangetown Middle School, 13 years old. And one hit in the regional, that one the comeback, and she looks home. Now we've got a crowd at third base. And nothing to it, no out. Nordstrom will get to first. What do you think of the defensive play that they made there? Little hesitation there at the pitch. Well, and what you're looking at as a pitcher is you want to see the eyes move over to third base to check the runner. In that situation, I think she came home out of instinct but bases were not loaded. So it was not a forced play at home. She could have just checked the runner, gone to one to get the second out of the inning, but now bases loaded. Ava Handelman now up with one out. Nowhere to put her, rising eighth grader out of South Orangetown Middle School. One for 11 in the regional. Great at Wii Sports. She's pretty good at softball too. That one looks at. Let's strike one. That's a great pitch throwing up there at that 56 mile an hour mark. She's throwing hard, but she's got to make sure that she continues to nip that outside corner, keep the ball up above the knees, get those calls, make these hitters do the work. Diorio at third, Arvidsson at second, Nordstrom at first. A little high and outside, two and one. We 
Ava Handelman, her coach said she's the silent assassin. Can go lead by example, silent assassin. I like the latter better. That one is clubbed to center field. Bria Belden lets it drop in front of her. And DiOrio is going to score for the first run of the game. It looked like Rhea Belden was going to have a play on it, but it did drop in front of her. And a good piece of hitting there for Ava Handelman, and it's 1-0 New York. Yeah, and off the bat, it looked like Handelman really squared this one up, but it dies just over second base. That's exactly where she needed to put it to be successful, get herself on. Great spot out there in the outfield. There's not much Belden can do, but get it in. Really good hit that scores the first run. That punch him in the mouth, get him up. They did that. He's basically again up, scoring the opposition 28 to 1. They're up 1 0 here. That one is high 2 0. Yeah, and when we talked to Coach Chiappa, he said, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but <laughs> we tell the girls to punch him in the mouth. Not, not really, but figuratively. And he says they run to the wall before warm-ups just to get that nervous energy out so that they can come out strong. And they've done a really good job offensively here in this inning. Stella Putelli is a good contact hitter, excellent fielder. Father's a pilot, mother's a specialty food sales. She had 222 in the regional. Just a great positive attitude, according to their coaches. So if you have a rough day, you just want to be around her. Well, they'd love to see her get a hit here. It's two and two. Coach talked about how she's always smiling, but she is so into every moment. He says she's a really good contact hitter, and right now with bases loaded, they're looking for that key hit. The 2-2 two -two to Stella Bertoli. Swing and a miss, and another big strikeout for Hamill. And that is a key pitch for Lily Hamill to be able to fill the zone in the bottom. It looks like that's where she's the most comfortable, comes through with that fastball down in the zone. Really good job of just late, hard break under the bat of Bertoli. Juliana Lorem, they call her Jules, 12 years old. Had a key base hit during their regional romp. And an opportunity with the bases loaded and two outs. Rising ninth grader. Looks at that one just off the plate, 2-0. Swing and a miss, two and one. Well, the thing that I'm impressed about with this New York offense is they seem to be on time. They're not late, so they've definitely prepared correctly to be able to step into this one and be successful against Lily Hamill. And Hamill has given them some gifts. They just need to capitalize with that key hit. That one is high, three and one, and now a significant pitch coming here for the right arm of Lily Hamill. The 3-1. Swing and a miss, and we're full with the bases jacked. You mentioned it earlier, Matt, but Lurum had some really key hits in regionals, and right now to break this one open at this point in the game would be a great opportunity for them. Fouled away, still 3-2. Coach says she's got power in a compact package. Packs a punch. She could deliver this great punch here. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming for Jules. Lays off that one. Does not get the high strike call. And Lily Hamill walks in a run. That was a great at-bat for Jules Lorem. And she even questioned that last pitch, not knowing if she should have swung or not. But look, that up at, above the letters, a really please, no, please, no. <laughs> exactly. But she did a great job of laying off that pitch. That's the pitch that most hitters are very vulnerable to. That one gets by the catcher. 
And in comes Nordstrom. And another one. No. She does touch the plate. She missed the plate as she crossed. You can hear the fans screaming. You got to touch the plate. The umpire did not make a safe sign. And she does get out there. The coaches are going to talk this one over with Lily Hamill. Let's watch it again. And it's a good feed from the catcher Gillum to Hamill. But Hamill she kind thought of, she was out. She and she was had yep. she held on to the ball, but she didn't hold on to the ball. But a great heads up play by the stands recognizing she didn't touch home plate. We're yelling at her to get back. The head first slide actually coming after the play rather than before. She thought she was out. Just right listen here. Go up there a bit of confidence. I need you to have confidence. Okay, I've coached you a long time, honey. I know that you got it in you. You need a confidence right now. Come up here and dominate the rest of the game. We'll get you more in three runs. We'll score runs, but I need you guys to start believing in this journey. Let's go. Focus in. Come on. Deep breaths, girls. Great advice by Coach Kundal as he steps in the circle to tell them to just settle down. That's the key right now. With a three run and Runners at second and third, the opportunity, you've got two outs. You just need one to get yourself out of this inning. So it's a, he, he makes a great point. Just settle down and play. They know they can score more than three runs, but they've got to make sure that they don't let this moment get too big. You see Coach Kundal having a conversation with the home plate umpire about that play at the plate. Yeah, asking if she touched it, and the umpire reaffirmed that she did come back in and touch home plate to count that run. So with three runs across, right now, Arizona needing to just settle down in and get themselves out of this inning. Roll a little ground ball, get a little pop fly. But New York definitely putting an exclamation point offensively on this one, being very disciplined at the plate, not swinging out of the zone. They have certainly delivered the first punch. And now Arizona needs a punch out. Two and one with two down and three already across for this team from South Orangetown Little League in Orangeburg, New York. Emma McHugh, swing and a miss, two and two. Fouled out of play. And sometimes you wonder as a coach, when should I go out and visit the circle? When should I stay back and let the team figure it out? I think that was a really key moment for him to step in and just try to calm down the defense. Well, it worked. It's the strikeout of McHugh. And for Lily Hamill, it's her third strikeout. She does strike out the center. Field, letting them know where she was going to be throwing that next pitch. Lily Hamill now at the plate in the 2 1 count. Lily Hamill threw 40 pitches in that first inning. Yeah, definitely uncharacteristic for her. She was expecting to get those calls on the corner and just couldn't get them. She can do it with the bat, hit 400 in that West Regional. Drove in six, scored six times. Walked six times as well. And she's a pitch away from a walk here, three and two. Well, and she's a power hitter. She hit her first home run out of the park this year, but she's not one of those vocal players that you look to for the pump up speech. She definitely leads by example. That one looked close, but a little off the plate. And a leadoff walk for Lily Hammer. Well, if there's anybody that knows the strike zone, it's going to be Lily Hamill. So a really good disciplined eye at the plate draws that leadoff walk and puts her in a situation where she can try to nip away at that three run lead. Now Molly Brown at the plate, 11 years old, rising seventh grader. Hit 286 in the regional. I asked her, what's the thing you like most about Little League? She said, winning. <laughs> I relate when it comes to that You're statement. not going to win, why even play, right? <laughs> I, I think that she and I would see eye to eye. 
Bali, a little flare and a shallow right. That's going to drop. Advancing to second is Hamill, and she will stand on that base, and the first two have reached. And this is just one of those seeing eye singles that's able to get over the head of the second baseman, Diorio. Just so hard to cover that much ground and get all the way there. It, it all comes down to a great first step, and she did have a great first step, but just beyond the leather, comes away with a base hit. For me, it's about base running on that one. Lily Hamill holds her ground until she sees that it's almost in and then is able to advance. Had she stayed closer to first base and not gotten that great jump over there to second, they would have thrown her out because of the heads up play out there by Handelman and Wright. Well, you heard Coach Kundal saying in that circle meeting in the last half inning, we're going to score runs. We'll get you more than three. He's got confidence in this lineup that was able to put up 55 runs in five games in that regional. Now Olivia Fossey steps into the box. Call her Liv or Livy, 12 years old, rising seventh grader. She's got a twin sister, Ava, on the team. you think is happening out there. Looks like the coaches and the umpires are wondering what's happening. So we I could give you a little bit more information on this one, but it didn't look like the umpire was ready to pitch or if he was calling an ill pitch before that because she didn't approach the pitching plate with her hands apart. So Got you it. have to come to the pitching plate with hands apart and then present those who've already gotten onto the pitching rubber. So, so that might be the conversation with Kiapa coming out to explain that not only to his pitcher, to her pitcher, but also the umpire explaining it to the coach. A 1-1 one, one to Fossey. The play, one and two. Well, and Matt, I can see why the umpire at home plate might have thought that that was an illegal pitch where she got to the pitching plate with hands together because she finds the ball on her hip with her glove in front of it. So the ball's not in her glove, but from the home plate umpire's vantage point, it looks as though she has approached with the ball in the glove. And a nice rebound there for Arvidsson as she strikes out Fossey for out number one. You've got to love a pitcher that has confidence to go up in the zone, but this one just nips that outside corner. It's hard to reach. Fossey, needing to let that one travel, just try to go the other way with it. Really good swing, but Arvidsson advantage. Now the left-handed bat, Ellie Henry is up, 13 years old, rising eighth grader. Had a great regional, hitting 545, a couple of runs batted in. On base percentage of 615 out west. Looks at that one on the corner for a strike, 0-2. The 0-2. Off speed, got her for a swing and miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Arvidsson. And that's what this Arizona team is going to need to lay off of. Those pitchers' pitches, they've got to let those go. This umpire has shown that he's a little bit tighter on the zone than some of the others within this um, World Series that we've seen so far. So they've got to be a little bit more in tune with what the umpire is calling. So there's that pitch on the outside corner that is getting called, but he's squeezing the top and bottom of the zone. So they've got to be a little bit more disciplined on those pitches up and down. Haley Kundal reaches for that one up high, and it's 0-2. The team manager's daughter, Brett Kundal's daughter, Kaylee. Good hula hooper. See if she's a good two-strike hitter. And coach told us. She may be the smallest, but she is the fastest player on this team. She would be so valuable to have on the bases. 
pokes that one in a nice play. Coming over from first, Savannah Nordstrom makes the play for out number three. So two runners on with nobody out. They become a part of this game. So while you don't have to play six consecutive outs, perhaps, you definitely have to complete your at bat and get to run the bases. One well, of the great things about this tournament, they added that rule about no pinch runners allowed for those substituted players. Anna Arvidsson. Now with a strike as she tried to do a little swinging bunt on the way to first. Well, the unique thing about Hannah Arvidsson is she's a switch hitter. So in this situation, mm. you see her from the right and from the left. Shows bunt, lays it off, two and one. 11 years old, going into the sixth grade. She finished up fifth grade at College Lane Elementary School. Doesn't like being called the little sister. Don't call her that. So why did I say it out loud? Swing and a miss, two and two. You must be an older brother. I am an older brother. That's exactly why you said that. But I'm an oldest too, and that's exactly what I put in my notes. She doesn't like to be called the little sister. She wants to stand on her own two feet, and here at the bottom of the lineup, she's trying to start things off right for New York. Arvidsson will slap foul. He's a state finalist in gymnastics as well. Very athletic player. And it sounds like it runs in the family because her great grandfather pitched against Babe Ruth. Kind of a cool fact that she shared with us. The 2 2. High 3 and 2. Even more impressive. When we asked, hey, are you related to anyone famous? She listed very famous family distant relatives Benjamin Franklin, Laura Ingalls Wilder, who wrote the Little House on the Prairie series, Richard Warren who came over on the Mayflower and signed the Mayflower Compact at Bono. Somebody's into their genealogy. Definitely cool. With 23 and me going on there, but she will take a seat. You can see the frustration there. Good long at bad, but it does result in the strikeout one away. Top of the order, back up. Adriana Diorio. Lays that bunt down, and it's a good one. And making the play is Van Land shooting. A nice cover there by Kaylee Kumbo. Just great awareness on something where you're short a late bunt. Well, and the thing that I like about this happens actually before this replay even began. Before the pitch was thrown, she looked to third base and looked to first base to see where her defenders were. So she chose to bunt this ball to first base, thinking that was her better advantage. But down there at third, at first, Van Lanshu able to come up with a good one. Now Haley, Haley Arvidsson, that one bounces off the plate. Now that one is a fair ball. And it looked like there was a little hesitation there from Lexi Honey. Maybe not knowing whether or not to let that one go. It bounced off the plate, but stayed fair. That was definitely one she should have let go because this ball looked as though it had the spin that would take it left of the foul line, but she touches it in fair territory. That will go down as a fair ball. Definitely not one she should have picked up. Because of the wheels down the line, Haley Arvidsson did a really good job of getting her to fall for that one and touch it in fair territory. Melissa Kiapa struck out looking her first time. Gets a, out ahead of that one. Line drive foul and out of play. That is a great hobby, sleeping. Well, with COVID and quarantine, that's probably a lot of people's hobby that they just aren't willing to admit. Yeah. When she's not playing sports, she says, I sleep. So it's eat, sleep, and play softball. One and one. Well, she plays volleyball as well. I mean, she's just an active young woman, an athlete that's able to do so many things, but she's another coach on the field. She sees the game through coaches' eyes, but also players' eyes. So she's a very, very valuable asset to this New York team. Played some flag football growing up as well. That one foul. 
plate flag football stopped a couple of years ago. Hits 100 soft tosses before every single game. So she is working at her craft and wants to be great. Well, she said, I just want to be ready when I step in. And if I take that many, I'm able to step in knowing I've prepared. Putting in the work. But that one is swung on, not missed, but it is caught by Kendall Gillum on the foul tip and the strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning for Lily Hamill as she tries to settle down with her team in a 3-0 hole. For these pitching staffs here at the World Series. And if you do pitch more than seven innings, you hope it comes the day before you're off day. Arizona's going to be off on Saturday. And New York is off tomorrow and a hit by pitch on pitch one here of this inning for the leadoff hitter Bria Belden. I mean, you love the ability to take a pitch, but that's in a tough spot right there on the knee. They get her to first base, they'll evaluate her to make sure she's okay. You like the sportsmanship from New York, they teach you that at a young age, just take a knee for a injured player to show respect. And this one you hope she's just going to be able to walk off. But New York definitely showing that. Mm. Yeah, I, the, and the question becomes, you saw New York's coach come out and talk to the umpire. He said, did she offer at it? Because if you offer at it and you're hit by the pitch, then it just goes down as a strike. But in this situation, it looks as though they're going to keep her at first base with just that hit by pitch. Bria Belden, 12 years old, leadoff hitter, shows this team great energy. She said, I, one of her favorite quotes, I didn't come this far to only come this far. So she's going to tough this out and hang out at first. And I agree with you, Bria. If you didn't come this far to go back to the plate. But I think the conversation that's going on replay to see or the full back in time and then to they are going to look at this play. Little League International was the first baseball organization to utilize video replay back in 2008. They used it in the Little League Baseball World Series. And in 2018 they used it for the first time in the Little League Softball World Series. And Managers have to specify the exact call they want to challenge, whether it's a ball over the fence, dead ball areas, foul tip versus foul ball. And they're going to look at this to see if perhaps she did offer at this pitch. What do you think? I think she offers. Unfortunately for her, I think the barrel is out in front of the plate as the ball crosses into that hitting zone while it does hit that front leg I don't see the pullback until the ball is almost past the barrel so where would she have to pull the barrel back to in order for it not to be quote offering so you just need to pull that barrel back to your shoulder so that it doesn't look like you're attempting to make contact that one it looks like the barrel hangs out over the plate as the ball is hitting her in the knee so that would technically be an offering but we'll have to see what the official ruling is when the umpire comes back and again it's it's the right challenge to make on that you feel bad that she got hit by the pitch but as the opposing coach say well if she offered at it, the rule states she hangs in there and doesn't mean she's out. It just means she's going to have to come back. Definitely. So they leave her at well, first base. They do base. leave her at first. Yep. Well, managers have up to two unsuccessful challenges in the first six innings. So that one unsuccessful. 3 nothing New York over Arizona. And now Lexi Honey is now up with Bria Belden on first. Honey slams that one to center, but McHugh is right there. Well, she put that one right on a rope. But Emma McHugh 
right in her tracks, and we've got one away. That is a fabulous hit. Able to take that one deep to center. It's played perfectly out there in center by McHugh. But because of that catch, you leave just the runner over there at first, so Belden stranded at first. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike. Well, and Matt, let's go back to Belden's at bat. Actually, what the umpire was looking at was making sure that there was no contact made with the bat. They okay. were asking if okay. it was a foul ball. And so because it was not a foul ball, that is the specific play that they were looking at. It was not about whether she pulled back or not. And perhaps in what we talked about in terms of areas of challenges, whether or not you offered at the pitch on a bunt, Again, maybe that is the more obvious challenge here, is that one is rounded back to the pitcher. And Landshut is out, and advancing to second goes Belton. Now batting number 18, Kendall So Kendall Gillum. 12 years old, rising eighth grader from Scottsdale. She'll turn 13 on August 20th. She hopes she'll be celebrating a World Series championship in the rear view, but now with a 1-1 count, two outs, and her team down 3-0. Okay, so here's a fact about Gillum that I don't know if I believe or not. She said her favorite um, artist was Kenny G. See, I read that her favorite nickname, or her nickname was Got Kenny it. G. Okay, now I feel better about that. <laughs> I'm glad that you cleared that one up for me. I'm like, okay, Kenny G and this age just do not hey, match. Hey, look, Songbird is a great <laughs> hit, okay? I could hear that on a loop if you're in the mood, but... No, I'll call her Kenny yes. G and feel much better about it now. Yeah, that would be quite the reach. Kendall Gillum, and I just happen to like Kenny G. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong no. with liking Kenny G. <laughs> right. Very good at the soprano sax. <laughs> that one to third. Up with it is Bertoli, the throw across the diamond. Started out with a precarious spot. But New York's defense holds again. It is 3-0, the team from South Orangetown. I'm telling you, she didn't pull back. They, so. they have such a cool relationship, talking to coach and, and daughter about how they you know, they, they came up short in the 2019 state championship and uh, shared a hug in tears. And this year they shared a hug and joy doing it two years later. More on that game and all the intricacies that went into that coming up. Ground ball, Hamill has it. One away. Well, not the kind of start that Arizona needs to be able to get themselves back in this dugout and get their bats going. They have not been able to find a way to solve the puzzle of Haley Arvidsson. But Lily Hamill starting this inning off really well with an out with a ground ball back to her. That's what she's going to need to continue to do. Just stifle these hitters, fill the zone with strikes, and trust her defense. Lily Hamill, that first inning, 40 pitches. That second inning at last check was 12 pitches. See if she can minimize it even more here. But that was a long first inning for Lily Hamill, but perhaps she is settling in nicely. 1-1 one, one count here to Ava Handelman. And I think the key to Lily Hamill's success in the circle is just getting to know this umpire zone. I think most of these teams are used to a zone that's a little bit more generous. And there in that first inning, she was not able to extend it at all and just kept trying to force the pitches into being called strikes rather than just filling the zone, settling down and trusting her defense. So because this zone has been a little bit more tight, not as generous as in previous games, that was the issue in that first inning, but you mentioned it. She cut that down just to those 12 or 13 pitches in the second inning. That one is drilled to left. Ava Handelman out of the outstretched arms of Ellie Henry. Rounding second is Handelman, and she's going to get into third with a triple. Ava Handelman got a hold of that one deep to left. Henry. Really got a glove on it. 
Henry tracked that ball so well, but just didn't go all out to be able to get underneath it. Handelman absolutely tattoos this ball. She had just one hit in regionals, but this one, it just flies. That's probably the hardest hit I saw, I've seen today. Great job of just getting a hold of that one, getting herself to third. So the home plate umpire put Brown, or put the runner on, thinking that that ball hit her, but that was actually a foul ball. And so there's gonna be a conversation had about this one as well. Make sure that you find a way to pull back in time. She did not pull back in time. It did hit her, but she offered at the ball. And so that's where this conversation is going with these umpires to make sure. But from our slow, slow-mo cam, it, you don't know if it, if it hit her at all. So then the conversation, foul ball. To her credit, Bertoli just sprinted down to oh, first. She played that one off like a champ. And the Oscar goes to. <laughs> that was well done. But they got the right call, and that's what we want here. Three nothing, New York. Handling with that one out triple. Kind of turned around Ellie Henry there and left. Bertoli's showing bunt again, and that one out of the zone, one and one. So as a de defense, you've got to figure out what out are you going to try to get. Obviously, New York is going to want to put another run up on the board, but with one out, do you look the runner back to third before you go to first base? I mean, you've got to make a decision defensively who you're going to try to get out. One and two now to Stella Bertoli. With one out, two strikes. You got to think she's not showing butt here. She is at two and two. Yeah, definitely takes that off the table once you've got those two strikes, because if you offer and foul it off, you're automatically out. So Unless you're hit by the pit. <laughs> but are you? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of controversy here in the first few innings. <laughs> the Little League Softball World Series. The 2-2 two -two to Bertoli is low and inside, and now a full count. Handelman on third, 60 feet away. Swing and a miss and a big K there for Lily Hamill. That is strikeout number six. And this is a beautiful pitcher's pitch. That's the one that Hamill is trying to rely on. Oh, just under the knees, falls off the table. That late sharp break, beautiful drop ball for the strikeout. And that will bring up Bridget Linehan. Now pinching in number 14, Bridget Linehan. And she will be the pinch hitter. That one off the plate. Hamill with the scoop, and she's in there. Perhaps the only play she could make did her best to try and get the glove scoop to home, but Ava Handelman slides under the tag from Gillum, and it's 4 nothing. And with two outs, you've got to be aware of where your most important out is. She should have probably gone to first base with that one, recognizing how close that play was going to be at home try to get that sure out over there, but with the glove scoop and the flip, it was beautifully executed, but at the same time, doesn't get the out, another run on the board. Now, did it hit her? <laughs> <laughs> that one right here, that's a good question. You know, it, there's so much going through a pitcher's mind there with Hamill. She sees the runner coming home, she knows there's two outs, 
the closest out is at home. She's not even probably looking at the runner room from first and thinking, the closest out is here, let's give this a shot. Maybe not thinking she has enough time to make that throw to first. Do you think that throw to first is probably the better play? It, it's the it's the better play, but in that situation, she executed that glove toss yeah. perfectly. Honestly, she did that like it, she practiced it all the time. That was a beautiful toss home, but at the same time, you need to try to get that out at first. You don't know if that runner's coming home unless there's a lot of communication going on. Caught in no man's land, but scampering back there is Lorem. Check that, Linen, Linehan. She is in there at first. Here in the bottom of the third, and a four-nothing lead for New York. Emma McHugh. Favorite player, Derek Jeter, likes cold play. Linehan. Does apply the tag as Fossey gets him out of the jam. Base running air there, but not a lot going wrong for New York. Definitely got hung up, is tagged out for the third out, but was she tagged out? New York with a 4 0 advantage. Pitchers plate to home plate, and that minimum mandatory play rule where everyone gets at least one at bat. And definitely one of those things you have to watch because there's also minimum play rules defensively if your team doesn't have the uh, minimum requirement of players. And so you'll see six consecutive outs being needed to play defensively as well. As so for New York, they don't necessarily have to do the six consecutive outs because they only have 10 players. But you have as many as 13 like Arizona does, then you, that mandatory play requirement does equate. Look at the bags. Everyone's got those new fresh white bags there in the dugouts, new swag and gear for these players. This is great. That's exactly where I was thinking, what I was thinking as you were saying that. The new swag that they were able to acquire since stepping here in Greenville, North Carolina. Cleats and bags, new uniforms. Definitely some polished looks as they step in with some new gear. New catcher's gear, too. Although I don't think Kiapa is wearing it no. here in this game. Haley Arvidsson did a good job in the circle. Couple of hits through three innings. Going on 47 pitches now, a one-two count here to her pitching counterpart, Lily Hamill. Lily Hamill hit 400 in the regional, but he goes down swinging for out number one. And as the, as the outs start to dwindle away for Arizona, you're going to see some hitters maybe start to press, and that seemed to be the issue that Hamill had in that at bat, allowing what she knew to be true about the strike zone to kind of go away from her as she swung on those pitches off of the plate. Not sure if they're calling Get Smart or this is a scene from Dragnet. I'm not sure. No, we're calling in subs, making sure people are under understanding the official scores that could be some substitution time. Well, Dalen Flowers is going to bat. If it was get smart, wouldn't he be talking into his shoe? That's true. That's true. <laughs> we are staying current with our references here. Dragnet, get smart, 
Maybe a little police squad when we're at it. <laughs> I think we're showing our age <laughs> up here in the booth. We're just relating to the fan watching the game. That's what we're doing. How's it going, fellow kids? <laughs> Dalen Flowers now at the plate. They call her D. 13 years old, rising eighth grader, Sonoran Trails Middle School. Went three for six in the regional. Had some big hits as a reserve. Oldest of four siblings. A great opportunity here. Tried to make the most of it, but coming on to make the catch. In center field is Emma McHugh. I am so impressed with this at bat by Dalen Flowers. Coming off the bench, she has not had an at bat yet but squares this one up, drives it into the outfield. I mean, that's the way you need to come in and hit off the bench. Great catch out there in center by McHugh to be able to track that one down. But I'm just more impressed by that hit by Flowers coming off the bench and being able to square it up. Okay, you get another reference. <laughs> yeah, where are we going here? That was a red ball. Adam West on the bat phone could be used. You know, the year will be 2050, and we'll still be using a red <laughs> wired phone there behind home plate. And I'm here for it. I'm fine. Ava Fossey. Now up. I mean, this crew watched Paw Patrol, maybe, as they were, and when they were younger. But I don't even think Paw Patrol has a wired phone. I mean, that's just aging us ridiculously. Well, Ava Fossey will be there on the double. <laughs> She can hit one too. It's two and zero, oh, two outs with her team down four nothing. At what point, you're Arizona? How, how do you start manufacturing runs here when you're going to be down to just a couple innings left? Well, the thing that does play to Arizona's favor is the strike zone has been very consistent, but a little bit more disciplined than, or a little bit smaller than other games. So as a hitter, you just need to show a little bit more discipline. You know, Hamill stepping in to lead off the inning, that strikeout, she needed to make sure she saw the ball a little closer to the plate. And she knows the zone better than anybody else out here. Ava Fossey, for her sister, her twin sister, Olivia Fossey. Okay, Olivia, a little more on the wild side. Ava, a little more reserved. A real cool moment. The state championship. She hit the Ava hit the leadoff triple in the sixth inning when they were down a run, and her sister Liv pitch ran for her to score the tying run. So the twins working as a team to achieve a state championship. And she puts that one up through the box, but a nice play by Arbutus. <laughs> Haley gets some help from her sister Hannah and Short. To end the inning, only 13 pitches thrown in that inning. Good defensive work. Great play defensively. Look at the range, able to come up with a big play. Gets them out of the inning. Nice catch over there at first. Cactus Foothills Little League out of Cave Creek, Arizona, facing South Orangetown Little League out of Orangeburg, New York. It's three nothing right now for the team from New York. Emma McHugh is doing a good job in the field. She struck out her first time at bat. Think about the run that this New York team is on. Outscored the opposition 28 to one in five games in the East region. They're up four nothing here. Yeah, more than a pitching team. and good defense as we've seen. Exactly, they beat New Jersey in that championship game one to nothing. Those games really prepared them to get them here. Look at those games against New Jersey. Those are the key to be. First two games. They score 23 runs. Final three games, they score five runs. They had a rain delay, lights went out, there were distractions there. In that championship, they won it. And now they're here. Good. When we talk to the 
you said our our team has taken this the, the COVID protocols very seriously. We didn't want to miss this chance to play, so they've actually stayed very removed from their from the the local community, and they've masked all the time so that there weren't any hiccups so that when they got here they knew that they would be able to just make a run as deep as they could try to win this little league you only have to do that you cannot run the risk they will win the team this week for the next game Teams with as many as 13 players. Kind of good bad about that. Players have to stop a little bit more. Players don't get to play as much, but they do get that experience, and that's where that mandatory play rule comes in. And that's one of the benefits of Little League. They recognize that this is an opportunity to learn. It's not so much about being cutthroat at this age. It's about making sure everybody is getting an opportunity to showcase their skills and help the team. Swing and a miss on a nice off-speed pitch from Hamill. And that is strikeout number seven. Well, Hamill at the regionals didn't have her best stuff out there in California. So they worked a little bit on, on a heel drag, also on her stride placement, got that fixed. While that changeup was a little bit high in the zone, it was good enough to be able to get that strikeout. She's hit 60 on the gun, but she can keep hitters off balance with that off-speed pitch as well. And we haven't seen that speed here right. today. And I, I think she settled in really well after that first inning hiccup. Just the, I think the smaller zone really took her out of her game a little bit. And defensively, they had some issues. But more than anything, she settled in nicely as the game has gone on. Hannah Arvidsson at the plate. And a nice defensive stop in that last half inning. Also made a great relay throw to the catcher in the state championship game to get a run around at home. We have seen, look, it's good to hit. You want to be able to do that, but you saw the scores that they were winning by. Blowout wins and nip and tuck wins. You've got to have defense. Anna certainly provides that. And one on the outside corner, two and two. So we've talked about how Hannah Arvidsson is a switch hitter. So she starts this at bat as a lefty and now will continue this hit bat with two strikes as a righty. That one fouled away. <laughs> and what age do you notice that a kid can do that or do you try to see if they can do that well typically in the softball world if you're fast they will look to flip you around if you're not hitting home runs or going to have the size to be a power hitter if you have any kind of speed softball players typically will be flipped over to the left side but obviously she's just not completely comfortable with that just yet so because of that she still comes back to the right side when she gets two strikes on her but she's starting her at bats from the left side looking to use a little bit more short game from the left side of the box, of the plate. Because when you're batting from the left-hand side, you're just trying to make some contact with it, put it down the left field, third base line, and get on base with your speed, not necessarily hitting for power as much as just trying to make contact. No contact there, but a drop third strike, and the throw made by Gillen for out number one. Out number two, I should say. Well, and the key to being a good slapper is using all the skills you have from the left side. So, yes, early on, you typically just want to tap and go because that's what you're most comfortable with. But as you hone those skills, you're going to be able to hit the ball into the ground, get the high hop. You're going to be able to use the drag bunt. You're going to be able to use a soft slap. So there's a lot of skills that can be learned from the left side. And as she continues to learn those, she'll be more effective over there. Meanwhile, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Lily Hamill, an eight in the game so far. That three run first 
hanging out there like a giant matzo ball right now. Four nothing lead for New York. And Adriana Diorio now up. Still looking for her first hit of the night. Walked and scored in that first inning. Really got things going for New York. And two and two. And Diorio talked about in her information sheet about what her favorite food was. She said it was an acai bowl. And girl, I am right there with you. I love those two. You know, I go away from food that has real different marks on the letters of the food. Like I see it's got that little that little mark below the I or the C and I just you know what I don't if I don't if I can't pronounce it, I'm not eating. Okay, this week we're getting acai bowls okay. together. All right. Man, they're so good. Okay. I will blame Diorio. <laughs> you know, her last name reminds me. I'd rather have an Oreo <laughs> drink, like a shake. All right, we, we can split in the middle. <laughs> All right. You can have the Oreo shake. <laughs> I'm going to be true to Diorio, though, and uh, get that fruit bowl. This trip just Keeps improved getting better. <laughs> a lot for me. Diorio to first. Van Lance Schloot. Shoot is going to just tag the Oreo for out number three. So three up, three down, a couple of strikeouts for Lily Hamill. She's got eight on the night, but unfortunately no run support. That's got to change. A couple innings left for Arizona. With the 10-year-olds in this same group from Rockland County, 30 miles north of New York City, making the trip south. Here to Greenville, North Carolina, and six defensive outs away from winning their first game here in Greenville. We will have Elsie Pottinger now up, pitch hitting for Ellie Henry. We talked about those mandatory play rules. She will get her at bat. Twelve years old. Going to go into the seventh grade. Fresh out of Desert Willow Elementary School. Love what the coaches say about her. So she's the, the first one to break down the nets, go get the bases, do what any coach would want. Just doing the dirty work to help out. Yeah, always loves to help. And she said that one of her favorite memories of this past year was being able to just have those team pool parties. I know that 2020 was hard in so many ways because we didn't get to play softball. We didn't get to gather as a team, but it's all about being able to be back together that so many of us have missed. And I love that she was able to just recognize that moment of spending a pool party together being our favorite moment. So our favorite athlete, Chris Paul. What a year it was for the Phoenix Suns. Got a good, good year athletically in Arizona and for Cactus Foothills Little League. Trying to stage a comeback here. They're going to have to find a way getting that leadoff runner on. So paramount to a comeback. Elsie Pottinger now with a full count. Keeps alive. Well, and I do need to make sure we give a nod. We've talked a lot about Arizona, the University of Arizona, but there's a lot of girls on this team that actually like ASU as well. So while I am a little bit I lean toward the Wildcat side because that's where I played. I want to make sure that we give a nod to ASU. I mean, Trisha Ford's done a great job with that Arizona softball program, and a lot of these girls are fans as they're able to go to those games a little bit more often than down in Tucson. Did you require that when you talk good about Arizona State, it shows the graphic that you went to Arizona? Round out to first, one away. No, Matt. I don't, but I'm really grateful because I'm proud to be a Wildcat. I mean, we had so much success, and uh, there's actually quite a few of my teammates watching this one because they're watching this game because they coach some of these yeah. girls. So Teresa Demeter was a pitcher at Arizona. She works with Lexi Honey, and Becky Lemke, a pitcher at Arizona, works with Lily Hamill. And then uh, one of my really good friends, Brandi Shriver, works with some of their hitters. And so just that connection to old teammates, but I'll see also the state of Arizona where my heart goes a lot. By the way, who is the player that gets coached by an Arizona player but likes Arizona State? 
So actually, I can't call her out because I Don't. feel really bad. Okay. So she went with what her teammate said rather than what okay. she felt in her heart, according to her dad. Okay. So her All dad right. tells us, no, she really does love Arizona more than ASU. Lily Hamill cough cough. <laughs> Didn't hear what you said. That's right. I actually reached out to her pitching coach, Be Becky Lemke, and said, is that right? She said, I better text her dad, and her dad got yeah. right back. No, that is definitely yeah, not this true. This pitch coaching relationship could be <laughs> on the fritz here, if that's the case. Uh, Jordan Orozco is now up. Pinch hitting here in the nine hole for Kaylee Kundal. Twelve years old, rising seventh grader from Scottsdale. Scored the winning run in the walk-off win in the state championship game. That one drops in front of the second baseman, Diorio, but a nice throw for the out. Had to get that ball out of the glove quickly, and boy, did she ever. Well, Matt, I played second base. I know how hard this play is because her momentum is taking her to the other side of the field. She's got to stop everything, pick the ball up, throw across her body. That's a fabulous play by Diorio. Retired here by Haley Arvidsson. Workmanlike effort tonight. Oh, and two now to Bria Belden. Swing and a miss. Tag to make sure. And another strikeout for Arvidsson. Nine consecutive retired for Arvidsson. It's all New York. of Camp Shanks. That was a United States Army installation in Orangetown, New York, named after Major David C. Shanks, the large U.S. Army embarkation camp World War II. Just off so don't believe you, but when it comes down to that location, that's a very sensitive spot to a lot of people because that was the last stop before you the so. skating area for groups, absolutely. The last stop USA is what they dubbed it. So certainly a, a spot that great remembrance for a lot of folks who paid the ultimate price leaving New York and many never coming back. Yeah, fought for the freedoms that we now just Sometimes I feel take for granted. So definitely grateful for all of those veterans who fought so hard to give us the lives that we have now. Says they processed 1.3 million service personnel, including 75% of those that participated in the D-Day invasion. 75%. That one called it a nice play there by Kiapa. Check that Gillum for out number one. Yeah, as a catcher, you've got to be able to come out from behind the dish, and that's exactly what Gillum's able to do. Comes away with it, calls it. You could hear her call it, call it, because we've seen some of the mistakes in some of our previous games. Kiapa grounds to third. Fossey up with a strong throw across the diamond for out number two. One pitch, one more out. Well, you're definitely seeing a very calm down Lily Hamill. Great play defensively over there at shortstop. That's off a changeup, so the hitter was out of it. So Fossey had to charge that ball a little bit harder than normal, get that play across the, di across the diamond for the second out. Savannah Nordstrom now up. Scored in the first inning. Heading into the eighth grade, South Orangetown Middle School. 
She can pitch as well. Cleanup hitter. They say they're not sure if there's anyone in this tournament, according to their coaches, that has more power than hers. As the ball is going to fly off her bat, could go out pretty easily if she gets a hold of it. Well, and those are some fighting words. If you're one of those teams that is not playing right now, the coach said she is the best hitter at the Little League World Series. So let's go. Bring your A game. Prove him wrong. But definitely gets intentional to walk because of that power she's able to bring to the plate. Lays off that one, not called the strike. Swing and a miss on the off speed. Just seven pitches thrown in that inning. But the big number is one. Arizona needs a run. Four of them to be exact. Let's go. You have no excuse not to be yelling this inning. We do not miss. Did a great job at just growing the interest of softball in that area. It came from, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's a little stressed right now. <laughs> but came from uh, Nebraska and Western Nebraska, Elkhorn, Nebraska, where they just had a bunch of softball teams and a lot of girls that played it. And then when he moved to Arizona, he didn't notice that in the community and said, you know what, we got to start this up. And it was a real good word of mouth. He used his daughters and their friends to join T-ball and that eventually led to softball and did some uh, wear your softball jersey to school day and all of those types of things that just, did I tell you he's a salesman as well? <laughs> yeah, definitely plays in well to the role that he has in the Little League there in Cave Creek. But six years ago, he said there were 20 players in their Little League. Now the league has grown to 200 girls, and this group won state two years ago. So for them to be able to be successful here, they definitely have to put some runs up on the board. But a little mishap out there in left. Laura hurt her ankle, so they had to go out and check on her a little bit. But she's okay. She'll stay in the game and try to get there between innings. Just check it out. Good to go. We'll see if Arizona's good to go. They're two, three, and four hitters up. They're pretty quiet here in this part of the lineup. Part of the lineup that needs to be loud, like Coach Kundal said. Yeah, and this part of the lineup is typically some of their most dynamic hitters, but. The only hit has been in the first inning by Van Lanshu, a single. Everybody else has gone down quietly. Including Lexi Oni. Second time she's gone down on strikes tonight. Yeah, her first strike was a hit away. She didn't to up in this nose, not a strike, but it's so hard to lay off when you feel the pressure and you need to put runs up on the board this in the game. Arizona has only had two runners reach second base tonight. New York and that defense, Haley Arvidsson has been terrific. And getting good defensive support behind her. She's got five strikeouts. Walk just one. It's Ava Van Lanshu. And you've got to tip your cap to Haley Arvidsson in the circle, just a two hitter in this one. She has silenced the Arizona Bats who put up 55 runs in their regional. I mean, this Arizona team definitely knows how to hit, know how to hit extra base hits. They have not had a home run. They did not have one in regionals. But when it comes to being able to hit, you've got to stay on those balls in the zone. And right now, Arvidsson doing a really good job just dancing around the zone and getting this Arizona squad to swing and miss. And back in 2019, Haley Arvidsson was a pitcher and their best pitcher in the state tournament. And she broke her finger in the first game and that just derailed the rest of their state tournament. So much so that the coach, 
Coach Chiappa had to teach his daughter how to pitch. Yeah, in the hotel parking lot, went out, taught her how to pitch, was able to come out. He said he was so proud of her because of the heart that she showed as she pitched in those pressure-filled situations. That one nearly gets through, stopping. <laughs> Unable to make that play. Good effort there from Adriana Diorio, tumbling her way to try and make that play. But we have a Van Lant shoot. shoot will be on with one out. And this ball comes off the bat. You think it's going to be a pretty sharply hit ball, but it just kind of scoots around. But that defense by Diorio over there at second, get to that 3-4 hole. You just hope that she keeps it in the leather a little bit longer, but able to come away with a, a pretty close play at first base, even after the mishandle of the ball. But back to put a bow on that story as the bat phone is now being used again, where you had Coach Chiappa saying he had to teach his daughter how to pitch. She went out and pitched, wound up winning that game, but they wound up losing the state championship, and there were a lot of tears there. And here they are two years later with a healthy Haley Arvidsson, Arvidsson in the circle, pitching a great game, and Alyssa Chiappa, who had to be taught how to pitch in that state championship tournament, is now the catcher and could be a storybook finish here in Greenville. Well, and that just goes to show you the athleticism of Kiapa to be able to step in, learn how to pitch in, you know, just an evening, step out, be successful. But it also shows that she thinks the game very well because she's able to step behind the plate as the catcher, call the game, manage the infield, and give them an opportunity to win by four runs. And now it looks like there's going to be a challenge at the play at first. And I wonder if they're going to challenge if she missed first base. Because it looked like she beat the play. Let's look. No, she Clearly touches fixed. first base. Clearly safe. But the call is, was she safer out? And that, that's what they're going to the replay to look for. But I love how Diorio just stays with this play. Because in real time, I thought maybe she did get her. But because at first base, Nordstrom allows the ball to travel and she catches it deep and doesn't stretch to go get that ball, that's going to be the result. You know, you get of two unsuccessful challenges in six right. innings. You might as well use it and see if you can. Get a free out in this. We'll step up the I also like that the coach is still fighting for every little bit, and it shows as a player you want to see a coach fight for you. Coach Kundo wanted his team to be loud. The fans certainly are as they're trying to get this team back into it. 2-0 and here to Gillum. They call her Kenny G. And that one is in there for a strike. 2-0 was my favorite pitch to hit because I knew that the pitcher was going to try to bring it back into the zone. My dad always told me, just swing out of your shoes on that one. But now the count is able to be brought back even. Haley Arvidsson with six strikeouts to her name tonight. And a full count now to Kendall Gillum. One out, one on in this first game for both of these teams, the final game of the night here in Greenville. Gillum back up the box, backhanded stop by the Oreo, flip to Arvidsson for the play. And there are two away. And that ball is corralled, and Gillum will stay at first. DiOrio. Back-to-back -back plays. I really love the aggression of Diorio and her first step. Does a good job of getting the backhand. Nice little toss over there to Arvidsson at short. They get the lead runner. A miscue gets the ball. 
tossed around the infield, but heads up by Chiapa back there behind the dish, backs up that play, keeps the runner at first base. But now in a situation with a four-run lead, you can see Coach Chiapa come in and be able to uh, give his players a little bit of a chance Let's listen to here. listen in. I can only assume he was just mouthing the words. Yeah, there was no, there was no verbalization. That was all sign language out to his players. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry for the technical difficulties, but I'm sure in that situation with two outs, runner on first, he says, "This runner doesn't matter. Just get me an out. Let's get out of this inning and take the win." Been a workmanlike effort here for New York. Said we wanted to get the first punch in that first inning, and they did with a three spot. And Arizona's been reeling ever since. I think Lily Hamill is grateful. She does get to get another at bat in this game. And her last at bat, she struck out on that pitch away. She was swinging at pitches off the zone. Here showing a lot more discipline. Really good job of laying off that pitch that's a little bit in the river. That's the pitch that she was vulnerable to in her last at bat, showing great maturity, stepping in and have d better discipline on the zone. The 2-1 to Hamill, fouled away, and New York is a strike away from improving to 1-0. Remember, we've got two different divisions. These two teams in the Jenny Finch pool. As Hamill rips that one to right, that will drop in. Runner stays at second. And Arizona not done yet here tonight. And this is one of the more sharply hit balls we've seen today. An outside pitch does a great job of keeping her hands inside this ball, allowing the barrel to trail back behind, drive it the other way, let the ball get deep. Great at bat for Lily Hamill. Keep this inning alive. Now back at number 17, Dalen Flowers. Dalen Flowers. Flew out to center in her first time up. Back in the fourth. And now an opportunity here for D. Big swing and out of play. And as you sit with two outs in this situation, you're down by four runs. You can't even win it with a big swing of the bat. So in this one, you're just trying to swing, you're just trying to string base hits together to keep this inning alive. That one inside avoids the HBP, and it's one and one. Now, what approach do you take when you know you're down four and you know your run doesn't mean much? Well, maybe that's not the approach. The ground out, no time for the answer because the answer to the question is New York. <laughs> what a performance by this team from South Orangetown Little League in Orangeburg, New York. As Haley Arvidsson goes the distance with six strike, uh, strikeouts in the circle. I think this was a very gutsy performance by New York to be able to come out swinging in that first inning. That's the difference in this one. We have more great softball action tomorrow. Oklahoma will take out North Carolina at 10 a.m. Eastern. All games airing on the ESPN networks and archived on the ESPN app. Congrats to Virginia, Oklahoma, North Carolina, and New York. Your day one winners at the Little League Softball World Series. This has been a presentation of ESPN.